that a place long known for its oil production is setting its sights on greener sources. Saudi Arabia, one of the world's biggest oil producers, has pledged to try and reach net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2060, although it'll still continue to produce fossil fuels. At Adnok, we have connected all our operations to zero carbon nuclear and solar power. The world needs maximum energy, minimum emissions. The target is to achieve 25% clean and renewable energy resources by 2030 and 100% by 2050. Black gold transformed the Middle East into a global hub for business, finance and trade. So how do you wean the world's biggest oil producers off crude? It may be shocking to hear that Saudi Arabia and Gulf Cooperation Council countries, which are known for their abundant oil and gas reserves and production, are now discussing the transition to clean energy. These countries, including the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Qatar, Oman and Bahrain, have combined oil reserves of approximately 500 billion barrels or 34% of world's proven oil reserves and produce an average of 22 million barrels of oil per day. In fact, oil and gas make up a significant portion of their economies, with 77% of Saudi Arabia's economy and 50% of GCC's combined GDP dependent on the oil industry. However, despite their reliance on fossil fuels, these countries are now taking steps to invest in green technologies and reduce their carbon emissions. This means they are not only looking to make their oil and gas industry more environmentally friendly, but also investing in clean energy technologies. It's like Mark Zuckerberg speaking out against Instagram and the negative impact it has on young girls and investing in technology to discourage its use. It's against their economic interest, isn't it? In this video, we will explore why these oil-rich nations are making the shift to clean energy and what it means for the future. On October 31st of last year, Sultan Al Jaber, the Minister for Industry for United Arab Emirates, discussed the importance of making the oil and gas industry more environmentally friendly and investing in clean energy. The shift in focus is a departure from the past, when Middle Eastern oil executives were primarily concerned with defending fossil fuels. In fact, Saudi Arabia and Kuwait have set ambitious goals of reaching net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2060, while the United Arab Emirates and Oman aim to achieve this milestone by 2050 itself. Qatar, while not setting a specific target, plans to cut its greenhouse gas emissions by 25% by 2030 compared to normal production. This commitment to sustainability extends to reducing methane, a potent greenhouse gas which all Gulf countries have agreed to do. The UAE will even host a climate change meeting in 2023. Despite some skepticism that these countries are only playing lip service to environmental concerns, their plans and investments in green technologies suggest a genuine effort to transition to clean energy. This transition could have major implications for global energy markets, as the Gulf countries could potentially become leaders in the industry and set an example for others to follow if they succeed in their transition to clean energy. Um, most of the world plans to get to net zero emissions through renewables, energy efficiency, electric vehicles, this kind of thing. What the Saudis are trying to do here, I think, is to say, actually, there's an alternative path. We can carry on burning coal, oil and gas, and we can just capture the emissions and we'll have a fossil fuel rich, clean future. Saudi Aramco, the world's largest energy company, plans to develop the ability to capture and store 11 million tons of carbon dioxide per year in Saudi Arabia. This is possible because the country has a geology that is suitable for storing carbon dioxide. By injecting CO2 underground, we are in effect returning carbon back to where it came from. How do we store CO2 safely and permanently underground? By imitating trapping methods used by nature to store CO2, gas and oil for millions of years. Storage starts by pumping liquid CO2 into a carefully chosen reservoir. There are two main types of CO2 storage reservoirs. Deep saline aquifers, which contain undrinkable salt water, and depleted oil and gas fields, both of which have the same key geological features to safely store CO2. Because Saudi Arabia has a lot of deep saline aquifers, oil and gas reservoirs and empty land with no inhabitants, it can store large volumes of CO2 over the long term. 
the storage methods are able to seal in the injected CO2 to prevent it from escaping. United Arab Emirates has a similar geology. Saudi Arabia and the UAE have the potential to be major producers of solar and wind power due to their abundant sunshine and strong winds. These countries have a desert climate with high levels of solar radiation, which makes them an ideal location for solar power generation. In addition, the strong winds that blow across the country's deserts and coastal regions make them good locations for wind power generation also. In fact, UAE has some of the highest levels of solar radiation in the world, with an average of 5.6 kilowatts per meter square per day. It is currently the cheapest producer of solar energy in the world. This is why Saudi Arabia is installing 12 gigawatts of wind and solar power by 2035 and 54 gigawatts of renewable energy by 2032. The UAE also wants to have 100 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity by 2030, both at home and abroad. This would make Mazdar, a state-controlled clean energy company, the second largest developer of clean energy in the world. The Gulf region is also making significant investments in hydrogen, which can be a clean fuel if it's produced using renewable energy instead of natural gas. The UAE's and Saudi Arabia's renewable energy industry can cheaply provide the large amount of clean energy that green hydrogen requires. Green hydrogen is important because it can allow large industries such as steel making and fertilizers to decarbonize. Those two industries contribute 7% and 1.5% respectively to global greenhouse gas emissions. Oman, whose oil reserves are smaller and more expensive to produce, is planning a $30 billion investment in what could be the world's largest hydrogen plant. By 2030, both the UAE and Saudi Arabia want to control at least 25% of global market for exporting clean energy. If the hydrogen economy becomes successful, it could bring in a lot of money for Qatar and the United Arab Emirates, possibly as much as $200 billion per year by 2050. While this is less than they currently make from oil and gas, it is still a significant amount of money. But why are these countries investing in green technology when things are currently going well for the oil industry with high oil prices? Developed and even developing countries like India and China are moving away from fossil fuels and increasing their reliance on renewable energy sources. Check out my video about how India is about to become the next green superpower. The Western countries are transitioning away from fossil fuels by supporting the deployment of electric vehicles, improving energy efficiency in buildings and industries, and implementing policies that increase the use of clean energy. This is reducing demand for fossil fuels. For instance, the International Energy Association has projected that demand for oil could also peak within the next next decade and then decline. So it makes sense that Gulf countries are investing in green technologies. But what's really puzzling is that the Gulf countries are taking a two-pronged approach to energy production, which involves both investing in green technologies and expanding their fossil fuel output. Why would you want to invest in expanding your fossil fuel output when the demand is reducing and the whole world is moving away from it? It makes sense that Gulf countries are investing in green technology to hedge their bets. But why are they investing so much in fossil fuels also? For example, Saudi Aramco plans to spend between 40 and 50 billion dollars in 2022 and even more in the coming years to increase its oil production from 12 million barrels per day to 13 million barrels by 2027. Adnoc, which is the national oil company of United Arab Emirates, will spend 150 billion dollars on projects by 2027, with the goal of increasing its capacity from about 4 million barrels per day to 5 million barrels. Qatar Energy will invest 80 billion between 2021 and 2025 to increase its production of liquefied natural gas by two-thirds by 2027. Doubling down on fossil fuels when the demand for it is trending down would not be a financially sound thing to do for most oil companies. But Gulf companies are an exception. Here's why. Every oil company wants to be the last man standing while all the other companies shut down. But Gulf companies actually have a good chance of being the last one standing. 
the big energy companies in the gulf region have a lot of oil and gas that is cheap to produce so they are likely to be the ones that are able to continue operating even if there is less demand for fossil fuels in the future that's why their big investments in new production could still be profitable even if there is a big decrease in demand and a fall in price in future so so far we understand why gulf countries are investing in green technologies and why they are investing in fossil fuels the question now is why are they trying to find ways to make their oil and gas industry more environmentally friendly can they just continue with as things are that's because the big gulf energy companies also seem to recognize that there will be strict limits on carbon emissions in the future they know that their main customers in developed countries are going to be more concerned about the environment and policies like the european union's carbon border tax show that this trend is likely to continue in order to keep operating these countries need to be the cleanest producers of fossil fuels not just ones with the lowest costs the gulf region also has an advantage here because its oil and gas reserves are not as harmful for the environment as some other reserves the uae and saudi arabia have also worked to make their operations even cleaner by using energy efficiently and reducing the amount of gas they burn adnoc is spending 3.6 billion on equipment like subsea power cables to replace natural gas with clean energy at its offshore facility This is good for the environment and could also be good for business. Some experts think that crude oil that is produced with fewer emissions will be worth more and this is already happening in the market for liquefied natural gas. It is worth noting that Gulf countries commitment to decarbonize and their investment in green technologies should be viewed in the context of their continued reliance on fossil fuels and expansion of production. They want to reduce emissions but also want to maintain their status as major energy producers. While they have made some progress in reducing emissions and investing in renewable energy, it remains to be seen whether these efforts will be sufficient to meet their net zero emission targets. If they are successful in their transition to clean energy, they could become leaders in the industry and set an example for other countries to follow. The Gulf countries approach to clean production could have significant implications, not only for global energy markets but also for the fight against climate change. If you like this video, check out this one. I'm sure you'll like it. I'm Sharath Mantravadi. Thanks for watching.